This is SpaceX's concept for the cargo Starship transporter. What if you get your parcel in under 40 minutes as soon as you order online? It might take a few years for our dream to come true, but not for the US military as they are all set to put their money for SpaceX's concept for cargo transport. Hello and welcome to TechSphere guys. In today's video, we are going to tell you about how SpaceX once again beat every other option in the race. So stay with us till the end of this video. The US Air Force announced recently that it is extending a small development program aimed at using reusable rockets, such as those being developed by SpaceX, to carry cargo swiftly to any location on the planet. The experimental military initiative named Rocket Cargo will be led by the United States Space Force, according to the Pentagon. The program will investigate and assist in the development of capabilities such as landing a rocket on a wide range of non-traditional materials and surfaces, engineering a rocket cargo bay, and logistics for rapid loading and unloading, and airdropping cargo from the rocket after re-entry in order to service locations where a rocket or aircraft could not possibly land. The Air Force proposed a nearly $50 million budget for rocket cargo in 2022. To continue the study concept work, it started last year with minor contracts to SpaceX and Exploration Architecture Corporation, or XARC. The Starship rockets that SpaceX is building are aptly named, as the military program will examine completely reusable private rockets capable of launching between 30 and 100 tons. Starship is currently the only rocket in development that intends to be both reusable and capable of launching that much mass. Point-to-point -point space travel is a mode of transportation in which a rocket is launched into space and then returns to a different site, theoretically allowing goods or people to be transported from one side of the Earth to the other in less than an hour. At its Texas facility, SpaceX has been testing Starship prototypes, most recently landing and recovering prototype SN15 after a high-altitude flight test. While SpaceX is attempting a feat no other rocket has accomplished, recycling rockets quickly is making spaceflight more like air travel, rather than dumping the rocket after launch. The most recent high-altitude flight test was the first to end without the prototype exploding. The rocket has yet to reach orbit for the corporation. Dr. Greg Spangers, the rocket cargo program leader at the Air Force Research Laboratory, cited NASA's Human Landing Systems Program competition as an example of companies working on viable rocket cargo possibilities. Three teams led by Elon Musk's SpaceX, Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, and Lido's subsidiary Dynetics worked on the NASA initiative which was focused on creating lunar landers that could deliver personnel to the moon's surface. The Air Force, however, has talked to many more companies than that about the rocket cargo program. According to Spangers, we talked to a number of providers that we see potentially coming to the table to compete for these contracts, Spangers said Friday. SpaceX is certainly the most visible, no question about it. But what you're trying to do is go into an orbital or suborbital trajectory, bring the payload back down, and land it on the planet Earth. There are multiple companies that have the technology capability today, not just SpaceX. The Air Force refused to reveal whose businesses it has spoken to regarding the rocket cargo program, citing the lack of appropriateness before the Pentagon initiates the contracting process, according to Spangers. Although the Air Force declined to specify a specific date, the contract solicitation is expected to begin soon. Additionally, the Air Force is open to considering companies who have not yet developed a point-to-point -point fully reusable capability for rocket cargo. Today we are going to build the interfaces and the inroads to encourage more and more companies to enter into that realm, Spanger said. Hopefully they receive a return on investment in a business case that's approved by the Department of Defense, expressing the interest in buying the service down the road. No matter whoever is in the race, SpaceX is so confident of its Starship, SpaceX's Starship system includes a family of spacecraft, a super heavy rocket, and a ground support infrastructure, all of which are currently in development. The consequence of stacking the booster and a compatible spacecraft is a totally reusable two-stage-to-orbit super-heavy lift launch vehicle. Some of the spacecraft in the family are designed to return to Earth for reuse, while others are designed to stay in orbit for future missions. With more than double the thrust of Saturn V, the two-stage stack is the world's highest and most powerful rocket as of August 2021. Super Heavy is the name of the booster stage. Unlike typical launch vehicles, the Starship spacecraft serves as a second stage during launch from Earth, and then serves as a cargo, a passenger-carrying spacecraft, or a lander to take cargo and crew to the surface of worlds, such as the Moon and Mars, once it has reached orbit. The booster and some variations of the spacecraft are being built to land on Earth, recover, and relaunch, while spacecraft that remain in orbit are being developed to be refueled for long-term service. Stainless steel hulls of 9 meters or 30 feet in diameter are used to create the booster, spaceship, and fuel and oxidant storage tanks on the ground. 
The flight plan for SpaceX's massive stainless steel Starship's rocket's first orbital test flight, a 90-minute around-the-world trip that will launch from South Texas and end with a controlled re-entry and splashdown in the Pacific near Hawaii, has been disclosed. In a document submitted to the Federal Communications Commission website on Thursday, SpaceX provided an exhibit explaining the flight plan. The test flight will take off from SpaceX's Starship Development Facility near Boca Chica Beach, Texas, just north of the U.S.-Mexico border, with no passengers on board. The Starship site, named Starbase by SpaceX, is also where engineers are rapidly developing new prototypes for the massive next-generation rocket. The massive reusable rocket will stand nearly 400 feet or 120 meters tall when fully assembled, making the Starship stack the world's largest launcher. On operational flights, the Super Heavy booster stage will feature up to 28 methane-burning Raptor engines, providing 16 million pounds of thrust, more than twice the power of NASA's Apollo-era Saturn V rocket. Six Raptor engines will be mounted on the rocket's top stage, which is also known as the Starship. The Starship vehicle serves as both an upper stage and a replenishable transporter, ferrying people and freight through space to destinations such as Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and other far-off places. The Starship vehicle is being developed by SpaceX as a fully reusable launch and space transportation system capable of transporting more than 100 metric tons of cargo into low Earth orbit than any other rocket in the world. A reusable Super Heavy first stage rocket will detach from the Starship and return to Earth for a vertical landing during an orbital launch attempt. SpaceX eventually hopes to grab the descending first stage using catcher arms on the launch tower, making it easier to set up and refuel for other missions. The Starship will continue into orbit, deploying payloads or traveling to deep space destinations before returning to Earth to be flown once more. According to SpaceX's filing with the FCC, the Starship's initial orbital test flight will aim to prove the rocket's fundamental launch and re-entry capabilities without fully testing the sophisticated landing and recovery techniques. On a track toward the east from the Starbase launch site to the rocket's Super Heavy booster, will fire its cluster of up to 28 Raptor engines for roughly 2 minutes and 49 seconds. The 230-foot-tall or 70-meter Super Heavy booster will jettison about 2 seconds later, starting a descent to land in the Gulf of Mexico, roughly 8 minutes and 15 seconds after launch. According to SpaceX, the massive booster will land around 12 miles or 20 kilometers from the coast. The orbital Starship will continue flying between the Florida Straits, it will achieve orbit until performing a powered targeted landing approximately 100 kilometers or 62 miles off the northeast coast of Kauai and a soft ocean landing, SpaceX said. The entire journey will take roughly 90 minutes, from takeoff in Texas to splashdown in Hawaii. SpaceX intends to collect as much data as possible during flight to quantify entry dynamics and better understand what the vehicle experiences in a flight regimen that is extremely difficult to accurately predict or replicate computationally, SpaceX said. This data will anchor any changes in vehicle design or CONOPS, concepts of operations, after the first flight and build better models for us to use in our internal simulations. Although the business has not specified a target date for the Starship's program's first orbital flight test, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has stated that the Starship's first shot into space might occur before the end of the year. According to SpaceX's appeal to the FCC for permission to operate communications equipment on the orbital Starship test flight, the demonstration mission will take place between June 20th and December 20th. The first Starship orbital test flight, which Musk hinted at earlier this year, may take place as soon as July, will come after a series of continuing atmospheric flights aimed at validating the rocket's performance at low altitudes. Each of the five Starship prototypes launched since December used three Raptor engines to propel the 16-story test rockets to altitude of over 30,000 feet, about 10 kilometers over South Texas. The most recent Starship prototype, serial number 15, nailed its vertical propulsive touchdown back at the Starship facility, despite four test rockets exploding during or shortly after landing. So whatever this concept is going to bring, what we know is we are one step ahead in the future. So what is your take on this matter? Tell us in the comments. If you want to see our upcoming videos, subscribe to our channel, ring the bell icon, and don't forget to like our videos as well. That's all from my side. Thanks for watching.